Oh, sorry, I didn't see you there. I was too busy drinking my coffee and reading my literature. Oh, well, seems that today we're doing a Dark Academia video. <laughs> this was way better executed inside my head. I looked up Dark Academia aesthetic on Pinterest, and a lot of people were wearing these type of sweaters and reading the books that we're reading in today's video, and they always had a coffee. So I was kind of trying to hide my cup, because I don't think that theirs is a Spider-Man cup, but mine is. I have never read Dark Academia before, so I thought that the fall time, the fall backdrop is perfect, because I feel like it has that moody atmosphere that you need when you're like reading a dark academia and it's kind of like a taste test in a way too to see like I've never really read the subgenre of dark academia as I just said I, I don't need to like keep on repeating myself so I thought it'd be interesting to dive into this video and try some so I actually think that I took the four most hyped up dark academia books and we read them in today's vlog how fun is that? The four that we are choosing from today are If We Were Villains, In My Dream to Hold a Knife, Ninth House, and The Secret History. That is what we are doing in today's video. So if you guys are ready for all of the Dark Academia vibes, let's go ahead and get into it. And I think we start off this video with If We Are Villains by M.L. Rio. guys oh i guess for visuals i will hold up if we are villains for you guys because i'm actually reading out my kindle right now but it looks better for our aesthetic and everything if i hold up physical copy of the book so that's what we're gonna do don't know why i'm overly explaining why i'm holding up the book i'm going into all of these books pretty blind not pretty blind completely blind all i know about all of these books are that they follow kind of the dark academia when people recommend dark academia these books fall under them i feel like this and the secret history are like the top two that people like always talk about and i see a lot of people love if we were if we were villains why did i forget what i was reading but i thought that this one would be easier to start with because when was this one published because i know technically i think the secret history is considered a classic i think it was published like in the 90s or something like that and i think this one's a little bit newer 2017 so i thought we'd start with this one i don't know why i'm overly explaining why we're starting with this one i am 11 percent exactly into this book right now we're definitely building up everything we've been learning about the characters learning little bits and pieces about them and enough to build up distinct characteristics to which you know kind of how they behave a little bit into how their mind works but they're all still kind of like a question mark and i think think that this book like I really love the setting and I like how it's written I didn't know how I'd like it because I don't think I've ever read like a dark academia before like a true like dark academia so I really didn't know like what to expect however going into this I really like the writing and everything I love how the writing is descriptive but it's not too descriptive when you go too descriptive in writing you're like okay we've had two pages of like you talking about the color of the paint on the wall like you could have just said green and I would have ran with it you know it paints the picture perfectly in my head because I've talked about this I feel like I've been talking about this recently I I'm an imaginative person Person, okay I, I i make up fake scenarios i do all this stuff but for some reason it does not commute to when i am reading a book i cannot imagine settings i can't do it but i love when an author has descriptive enough writing where i can really like put myself there and that has been happening in this book which i feel like also just really immerses myself into it the way that this book starts you kind of are guessing that something has went wrong like i said i'm going in completely blind so i don't even know like what went wrong so something has went wrong and then you were now flashing back and it's split up into like acts. So right now we're in act one, scene nine. And it's like all very Shakespeare, which I don't know anything. I know nothing about Shakespeare. Am I a little lost when they start talking about Macbeth and the tragedies and the comedies of Shakespeare and like how all of this stuff are like they start quoting Shakespeare? 
Yeah, but it doesn't get in the way. Like it's not something that, it's like a big plot point, but it doesn't get in the way if you don't know about it, which I appreciate. I like like when they talk about the Shakespeare, but I don't know what it means. So sometimes I feel a little dumb. Like when you're sitting at a table full of people and they're having a conversation and you can kind of like understand that the conversation is like funny, but you don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> I don't know. That is where we're at right now. I am thoroughly enjoying the book. I think I might switch over to reading the physical copy. I don't know. I've been loving to read on my Kindle. Actually, no, I'm going to keep reading on my Kindle because I don't know something about just like opening this book. I was just kind of like, yeah, I think I'll read on the Kindle. Hello, everybody. So as you may be able to tell, it's dark outside now. Can you tell? I feel like you can tell. It has been a huge day. And when I say huge, I mean, I've just been like doing so much sorry i'm like my ear hurts <laughs> please mind if i just stick my finger in my ear while i talk to you i should not be delirious because it's really only 9 40 and i'm acting like it's like two o'clock in the morning I, I love going to bed early okay so i just read act three and if we were villains i kind of i don't know i kind of like vaguely remembered something the whole entire time I've been reading it, like vaguely remembered something that somebody said like happens in this book. It's like a big plot point. Maybe it's not because like it hasn't been talked about yet. And I'm literally like 140 plus pages in. And so I was like, oh, they haven't talked about it yet. So, no, I must be thinking about something different. And I just got to the point where I'm like, oh, wait, so it was that. Me trying to do the non-spoilers for this is so hard. But anyway, honestly, I'm really enjoying this book. The only thing that sometimes I feel like does damper my enjoyment, because like at first they were talking about like all the Shakespeare stuff. And I was like, yeah, it's not bothering me. And it's not bothering me. It's just like when it's going on, I have no clue what's going on. But on the same on the same coin it doesn't really matter like i'm sure it adds to it like if you guys know about shakespeare like i'm sure it adds to the experience and i'm sure honestly the shakespeare is like a part of the book for a reason like it means the whole entire thing there's probably just different metaphors and euphemisms i don't even know what euphemism means actually let me look that up i just feel like it i thought that, that sounded smart so i started saying it a euphemism is a mild or indirect word or expression substituted for one considered to be harsh or blunt when referring to something unpleasant or embarrassing, downsizing as a euphemism. Oh, so like a euphemism is using a different word for like a bit. So instead of saying cuts, you would say downsizing to make it sound prettier. <laughs> so it's not a euphemism. So glad that we had this language arts lesson in the middle of this reading vlog. Metaphor, whatever. I'm sure, and I will look it up after I'm done with the book, like what the Shakespeare stuff means. Because like, I just can't help. Do you guys want me to like stop reading this book and start reading Shakespeare? Like it's never going to happen. I'm stupid. I don't think I'm intelligent enough for that. Sore. <laughs> like, that's the only thing that's really throwing me off. It's just like, there's been like a few scenes. Cause like the Shakespeare play, I think, are, are they doing Caesar? Or are they doing Macbeth? Or are they doing both? I literally don't know. But it's like a huge part of the book, obviously. And when they're like doing their play and like, quoting Shakespeare I'm just lost I'm lost and you guys may be like okay Destiny well, they're quoting it I don't know it doesn't make any sense in my brain and it's not like making me dislike the book it's just like I'm like like this every man put himself into triumph some to dance some to make bonfires each man to what sport and revels his addiction leads him go I don't know what that even means. I can't even like code that, like decode it. I can't even do it. Anyway, so other than that though, I have honestly, I think I made it to page like 50 or something earlier and I hadn't picked back up the book since. I like just picked back up the book and I'm literally already like basically 100 pages in from when I like picked this book back up and I haven't stopped reading it. So I'm really, really enjoying it, which I really like. Like I like the writing, I like the setting, I like the characters, except I hate this one character. I don't know and I have some guesses as to some things that are going on and does this book have a plot twist I thought people talked about this book having a plot twist maybe I'm making that up I think I'm making that up maybe I should you know continue reading and find out I guess the only update that I have for you guys is that I am really enjoying it surprisingly not that I thought I was gonna like dislike it but honestly right now this could be like a four star <laughs> dare i say a four also i've been like annotating this book which i didn't expect but there are some beautiful lines in this and i really like how it's written also i can't tell what time period this is supposed to take place like this was written or published in 2017 does this take place in 2017 hey maybe i could look it up but then i'm too scared to look up stuff about this book while i'm reading it because i don't want like spoilers to come across because i feel like i feel like that could be a thing 
I feel like it could be a thing. So I'm just gonna keep reading. Okay guys, I'm in the same spot. This house is like very like, you can hear because the wood floors, are like the OG wood floors, okay. I'm not gonna talk about the book, I'm gonna talk about the house for a second because this is what's been happening to me. Cause I think it, oh, it's like an hour later. It's like, a, well, was it like 9.30? What time is it when I last talked to you guys? <sighs> anyway, I'm in severe need of a hair wash. I do that in the morning. Anyway, I was talking about, oh, the house. I, it's like 10.30, it's almost 11. It's 10.30, so that means it's almost 11. Naturally. The way this Airbnb is, is like this is the house, but there's like a third level because there's two levels. So there's this one. Well, no, actually, there's four levels because there's a basement. And then this is like the level, the front door is right here. And then we have the upstairs. But there's actually like another upstairs where somebody like lives. Like they don't live in the house, but they live in the upstairs like apartment. There's almost like an apartment on top of this house. And I think that whoever's living there is moving around and I'm hearing them like move around. And it's weird because I'm downstairs by myself. My mom's in bed and I just keep hearing things like move around. And today in the podcast episode, me and Sarah were like talking about spooky stories. I don't like the vibe. On page 217, let's see how far I am into if we were villains. I kind of got scared of Goodreads for a little bit and now I'm like back on it a little bit. If you guys follow me on Goodreads, what do you guys think when I like update? So random. Oh, I'm actually 61% through this book. Okay, so we're pretty close to finishing it. However, I am in a bored part of the book. Like honestly, the book was moving by pretty fast and like I was very intrigued, very interested, but now it's like we've dragged out and like we're not learning anything new. Like at all like nothing new is happening it's just like nothing is happening we're just like reading about the characters interacting but it's the same interactions we've been having the whole entire book and the only reason that i noticed that is because like literally in the last update literally in the last update i was telling you guys how i was like flying through the book and now that's stopped and i keep on wanting to like pick up my phone that's not good that's not the best so i don't know but i really want to finish this and i want to get to another book tonight i'm very tired though but i do want to get through them. I do wonder how we get to where I know that we are at in the future because technically when you first like get into the book you're in the like present and most of the book takes place in the past where they're kind of like recounting when they were in college and it's like years later in the present and I want to know what's happened in the present. Ooh, the anxiety of not knowing. I know that if I indulged in Shakespeare like they do, I would be insufferable. That's it. in the background it's something about those at night don't hit like they do in the day maybe it's just because this house anyway i just finished if we were villains and i will say i was not caught off guard with literally anything i quite literally guessed everything within like when i first picked up the book and like i said you're kind of introduced with this thing right off the bat and i literally guessed it within the first 50 pages, less than 50 pages. I guessed the whole entire like plot of the book. And I've never heard anything about this book. Like you guys may hear me say that and be like, oh, well, it's cause you, you say that post. I've never seen like a spoiler for it. I did guess literally everything. However, the ending, I do want to like scour what people think of this ending because this ending did leave my jaw on the floor a little bit. Like I guessed stuff, but kind of the way that this book has a finality and ends, it probably ties back to a Shakespeare play. And I will probably learn that as I research what this ending means. Crazy thought. My review on this book, I think I, you know what? I just decided I am not gonna say a rating right now. We're gonna save all the ratings for the end, not to be annoying, but purely because I need to like sit with this book in between two ratings right now. And I need to know which one it is. And I feel in my heart of hearts that I know which it is, but I don't know for sure. So I kind of want to sit with it. What should I do? What should I do? I, I think we're going to wait till the end of the video. And maybe if we save the ratings for the end of the video, it could be fun. And you guys can go through the whole entire video wondering what I really think about it. And I'll have you on the edge of your seat. I'm nothing but 
pure like i know cinema i know how to keep you guys on the edge of your seat i know how to keep you guys entertained yeah totally you guys are probably literally bored to tears this was interesting but off the top of my head the other books that we have to read from what i've heard and even on like the little blurb of this on the back it literally says echoing such college set novels as Don Tartt's The Sacred History. And I've heard that this book and The Secret History are fairly similar, so I definitely don't want to pick up The Secret History next. I included Ninth House and Deadly Education because they are dark academia, but they're also fantasy. So they're different. So I think, honestly, I might pick up Ninth House next because it is the thickest book. <laughs> but then again, Don Tartt's The Secret History, those pages are like Bible page then so but i do kind of want to split up and read like the fantasies in the middle and i've heard is in my dreams and whole knife kind of similar too to all of these i like heard that they are i don't know crazy thought but first book finished i'm gonna no i can't update my goodreads because i don't have a rating hello everybody i have decided that i'm winding down for the night it is actually 12 30 at night which is crazy it may not seem crazy for those of you actually i was literally about to be like i haven't been staying up that late i've literally been losing so much sleep but i guess i haven't been staying up late while i've been here i've only been here for like two days i don't know what i'm talking about but i do know that i'm about to start ninth house because i downloaded it on my kindle because i literally every single time that i'm about to start a book i always check if it's on kindle unlimited sometimes i just enjoy way more reading on a kindle than i do on my books but sometimes it's the other way around i actually started ninth house in 2021 i've said this so if you guys have heard this i'm sorry but i actually started it in 2021 but i had never read kind of like a fantasy this is a fantasy definitely but it's sometimes it's in the fiction i don't know like i'm supposed to be a reliable source for this type of information but like i'm not and i wish i was but i'm not because sometimes i just don't know what i'm talking about but i just keep talking and it's like just don't do that you know what i mean i'm so frustrating anyway it's downloading on my kindle right now i think ninth house is like secret societies does it take place at yale and it's kind of like sinister a little bit like kind of paranormal i don't know anyway i'm gonna put on some drew gooden and then i'm going to start ninth house i probably honestly won't get far into it because i'm tired oh i have a lot of books my kid unlimited fall of bradley reed butcher and blackbird i downloaded that oh morbidly yours I feel like those are all three ones that I should read this month. And the thing is, is that I want to do this video, but I'm also in the mood to like mood read. Like sometimes I have themed videos. This is, this is not a crisis to talk about in this. This is more of like a vlog, like a vlog conversation than like a reading vlog conversation. My teeth are brushed. I have my Stanley. Let's start with this book. welcome for the little song um you guys don't get to see me my makeup that i just had on unfortunately also shout out to bessie sarah because she had two of these sweatshirts and she gave me the second one and it says we're not who we used to be from the song two ghosts by harry styles which is on my fall playlist which you guys should listen to anyway update i have tried multiple times and failed to read ninth house i just can't get into it right now i don't know if it's because like since it is a fantasy it's a little bit more complicated and my brain is just not commuting with it at all. Instead, I'm going to go into In My Dreams, I Hold a Knife. I have no idea what this one's about. I think it's kind of like If We Were Villains, The Secret History. I don't know, but we're going to read In My Dreams, I Hold a Knife and see what this book has got going on. <laughs> Hello, everybody. It is my last day in Jersey. And I actually, last night, I think, did we talk about this? 
I feel like all of my videos are me always forgetting when and what I recorded. I am currently on page 127 right now of In My Dreams I Hold a Knife. I probably am about like 20, 25% through the book right now. And I can say that I can understand like why people draw the lines of the similarities between this book and If We Are Villains. And I feel like I can infer from these of why they relate it to the secret history. But I can say, just comparing it to If We Are Villains, that I like this one more because the Shakespeare stuff, while I know it was very purposeful and there are a lot of like thoughts I have provoked, which we will get into when I do more like in-depth reviews at the end of the video, that I can appreciate with If We Are Villains, it doesn't change the fact that I feel like the emotional in the effect that they were put there for were lost on me. Whereas this one is more of a story where you are following the main character and you can like automatically see their flaws and you can see like all of the characters flaws and you have this group of characters and there's no like Shakespeare plotline. With If We Were Villains, I feel like the Shakespeare plotline was so prevalent and we talked about it so much that it kind of took some of my enjoyment away from the book even though like I didn't want it to. With this one, since there's nothing like that kind of taking away, I've been really enjoying the story and really putting myself in the setting and stuff and it may be because I'm looking out the window right now and it's kind of gloomy it's a gloomy day here and the street that we're on it's like a bunch of trees and the leaves are falling I don't know like I feel like I'm there you know I'm enjoying this one like I was enjoying reading If We Were Villains but I'm enjoying reading this book more and I'm enjoying like the drama and stuff with the characters more one of the funny thoughts that I had <laughs> that I feel with this book is that like with this book and If We Were Villains they off the bat introduce like I think there's like what is that like seven like six to seven characters in this one it's seven but i can't remember if we are villains how many there are but it's like they introduce them all and then you i have to spend like the next probably like 20 or so pages being like wait who is that wait who is that you know because there's so many characters introduced at once that i feel a little lost at first but then i have to remind myself like you will learn you will learn don't don't fret don't fret and i just thought that was funny but i am going to continue reading this book today <laughs> walk into this room and it was dark and I was like what's creepy in here I don't know I just finished in my dreams I hold a knife what is it with these books listen every book that I read I've really read two but so far the books that I read the beginning really gets me and I'm like so interested and then the middle falls through and then the ending like kind of makes up for it and that leaves me not knowing where i want to rate a book like this has been happening to me so much usually i leave a book i'm very strong with how i feel about it and i'm like yeah i can really define what i feel the rating is but with books lately not even just for this video but just like books period i have been having a hard time rating them recently this has been an interesting development for me however with this book this is definitely a dark academia but it's also a thriller and i actually didn't remember that fact until reading like the review and and I was like, oh wait, this is a thriller, but it's mixed with a little bit of dark academia. It's about like a prestigious college. There's a really close-knit group of friends and it's years later and they're coming back for a reunion and there's this unsolved mystery between them and you're kind of trying to solve it along with them. But here's the thing about thrillers because I, I didn't remember that it was a thriller. Here's the thing about thrillers like this. Usually they make the characters unlikable. Like every single time or majority of the times that you read a thriller, think on this, think on it. There's always something that like you don't like about them. Like you you are kind of rooting for them, but there's like always like the, the author doesn't make them all the way 100% likable. And in this book, you don't like any of them. You don't like any of them, really. There's just certain things where I was like, wow, I don't like the way that this transpired. And that doesn't mean that the book is bad is the thing. It's just that I don't like the way it is. But then again, ratings are personal. So it's like maybe that does make the book not like bad, but I just didn't enjoy it. But that does reflect upon the rating. Do you see how much of a dilemma that I'm having here? This one, I guess I didn't realize though that how different this one was since it was a thriller. You could definitely feel that aspect of it being a thriller versus like just the regular kind of like fiction dark academia. I also have to sell my thoughts for this one, but we're doing like a full kind of review at the end. Okay, everybody, we're two books down. We got three books to go. Well, I feel like how big is the fly in this? Cool. And I think I might read A Deadly Education next. Comfortable 
pull on the back of this chair and it's not happening. I am currently reading Ninth House. I know I've been doing almost like a tennis match, like back and forth, back and forth. But now I'm back to reading Ninth House because I just, I really want to read it. And I really want to know like the vibe. Except I'm literally only on page 60, right? Not, I'm not really far enough to gauge an opinion on it. But I stop every like five or so pages not because like i'm confused but it's just not grasping my attention because like we're only 60 pages in it's going back and forth back and forth and i'm like okay and then it drops like knowledge i keep reading the book i put it back down because i'm like oh i just don't get it and i was like maybe if i go on pinterest i have a book pinterest and a regular pinterest so i went on my book pinterest and i was like maybe if i look up ninth house aesthetic i can really get into it and that did help and i am gonna pick back up the book but i've also been like i posted this on my story that i'm reading it and I got some DMs of people and I've also just been like looking up people's like non-spoiler reviews on this book. I see a lot of people that really love it. Like they get like special editions of it. Like they love it. I saw one person have like a whole entire dedicated like ninth house shelf. So I'm like, what am I missing right now? But like I said, honestly, 60 pages in of this like pretty thick book is not far enough in to like gauge like an opinion and say the book is bad because i don't think the book is bad i just think i'm having a hard time getting into it and that doesn't mean that i'm not going to enjoy the book it just means for right now i'm having a hard time getting into it but it is a perfect day to read it because it's very gloomy out today it's very cold it's like 40 degrees outside which is perfect weather for this i feel so i've been trying to read this though for hours and i just keep putting it down and that's how i'm feeling right now hello lovely people it is like 11 o'clock at night and in all honesty 100 percent thought that i would be done with this video by now here we are and i don't know if that's a cause of me or this book because here's the thing if there's one thing i am it's dedicated because i just can't i thought you know what destiny i haven't been able to get in through this book it's been a day since the last clip and i haven't been able to get into the book right and i was like you know what destiny maybe put the book down try to read the other two books that you need to read and then we can come back to this one last but i was like no no i'm going to i'm gonna climb this mountain this is my everest right now i'm still reading ninth house i'm literally only 35 percent through the book right now and i have been making the valiant effort for the past two days and i keep on picking the book up putting it down picking it up putting it down picking it it's a never ending cycle when i looked this up on tiktok and even got people dming me everybody you wouldn't know what everybody said everybody was like give it 100 pages destiny give it 100 pages and then after that i'm telling you it gets good just to let it have the build up and i was like you know what guys you totally fair i need to let the book have some build up and and let me be completely honest here i'm not saying that the book is bad because me getting through the build up has been hard that doesn't make the book bad it just means that it is hard for me to be getting through the build up and then i updated my goodreads because i was about 25 percent through the book and i was like man hey don't know if i can do this i started getting people telling me well make it to halfway through the book what happened to this what happened to the 100 pages and it gets better now you guys are asking me to go 50 percent, and then you guys are like just go 70 and then by the time that i'm at 70 i might as well finish the book which maybe that's what you guys are trying to do maybe you guys are trying to motivate me anyway that being said i do though feel like right now at this very moment i just finished chapter 9 now i'm on chapter 10 i do feel at this very moment in time that we are finally starting to get to what the book's about i feel like we are starting to get the the plot is there of where we're going to go like i can see the road that we're going to travel on like the the road was kind of like this for a little bit and now i can now see the path in which we have to take and the light is very distant at the end of the tunnel it's very very distant but i can see that it's there anyway my thoughts on this book so far i don't have a lot of them just because not a whole lot has happened it's just been like a lot of build up getting to know your main character by the way i didn't know like what nine thousand was so i'm going to give you a very vague also because I don't really understand. That's going to be very vague. So basically you follow Alex and she has got this offer to go to Yale. I'm not going to explain why. So she's here and she has this ability to see greys, which are like ghosts and spirits or whatever. Okay. And there's some weird stuff going on in these secret societies. That's essentially what this book is about. It gets a whole lot more complicated, but that is like the kind of roundabout, extremely vague type of way to explain this book to you guys i have failed to be told via tiktoks via so many people talking about this book 
so I was under the impression, and this may be a me thing, like I'm not placing this blame on anybody, but I want to let you guys know before you guys try to pick up this book. All I knew before going to this book was like, it was a dark academia fantasy. And I was like, cool, that seems a little different and fun. No one, from what I have seen, talked about the kind of more graphic displays of SA of a child. Drug use, just stuff about like that type of stuff and other like triggering subjects that we came across. I don't even know because now that that stuff has happened I don't know what more is going to happen as we go on with the book but it, I didn't know that stuff like that had to do with this book. I had no clue that it was like that because it's like dark academia and you guys may be like okay that's not dark academia but like I didn't expect dark I just thought it meant like the atmosphere was a little bit darker. I do just want to let you guys know that if you are wanting to pick up this book, I would definitely say check the trigger warnings. And that's another thing, like whenever I heard people talk about this book, I I personally, from people that I've heard talk highly of this book, I never heard like the check trigger warnings, like this stuff may be happening in the book, which because me personally, I do like to be aware of the trigger warnings to like prepare myself, but like I was just laying in my bed and then I'm reading this and all of a sudden this kind of more graphic scene pops up and I was like, oh wow. I literally had to turn off my Kindle and start watching some Drew Gooden, some comfort YouTubers. But I just wanted to warn you guys about that because I had no knowledge of that. And like I said, it's nobody's fault. It's nobody's fault. But I just wanted to make sure that you guys were notified before you try to go into the book. Other than that, I don't have a lot of thoughts because not a lot's been happening. To solidify what I uh, keep on repeating myself with, I can see the road that we're about to travel. Do I know it's going to happen? No. Is it gonna be an easy journey? Probably not. Am I gonna wanna put the book down another 15,000 times? Probably. But we're 35% through. Every time I see the percentage go up, I get a little bit happier. outside of my house like I can hear it anyway I finally did it guys I know you never thought the day would be here but I finished ninth house but I did it four days I think it's been four days of me like actually valiantly trying to read this book I have finally finished it and the thing is is I feel so conflicted because I think like in every single place that I've spoke about reading this book I've been like yeah this has taken me a really long time I don't know if I like it but then like once before today honestly I had like picked up the book and I probably would read like 10 to 15 percent of the time and then put it down and I know that it may seem weird for those of you who like don't read on a kindle but when I read on my kindle instead of saying pages I say percent that may sound weird of me to just act like I know the exact percentages of pages I'm on okay I'm not smart enough for that all right I read little fictional words okay don't know how to do basic math so there's that before today I would read 10 15 percent of the time put it down like I couldn't I couldn't keep going today I sat down and I literally just like sat on the couch and did not stop reading the book and then I came upstairs because Charlie literally was like I'm ready to be out of bed she just said that to me she said it to me and everything shout out to a real one can you guys even see her oh my god can you see that my room's a mess I can't see the camera so I don't know so I think when I sat down to finish this book I was at 45 percent through the book and I sat down and just read the rest of it I will say for those of you who were 
telling me like Destiny just read like I'm telling you just like trust me like read the book read the book because I actually I, th I feel like it was split in the middle of people telling me how much that they loved this book and then people telling me how much they hated it and DNF'd it Ugh, I don't know once I actually sat down today and started reading it I was enjoying it but there were also like but it's not going to be like highly rated from me because of how much of a struggle it was for me to read it and get into it. I'm going to put them up here now, but also I'm going to put them up again at the end of the video, kind of when I do like a review and can really sit down with my thoughts on all of these books. But I'm going to put up the trigger warnings now because I have seen people talk about this book, but I haven't seen anybody talk about the trigger warnings. There are multiple triggering things that happen in this book that are very, very triggering and very dark. I just want to make you guys aware of that before you even try to pick up this book. And you guys may be asking, Destiny, should I pick up this book? Like, we are on this roller coaster of a ride with you. Like, do you recommend it? And honestly, I would say yeah. Alert the press because I do recommend this book. If you like Dark Academia and you like fantasy, I feel like you guys would eat this book up. The fantasy element is there throughout like the whole entire thing. It's kind of like a magical, but it's like almost like magical realism in a way because I've said it multiple times, but this takes place at Yale. So it takes place like in the real world. This isn't like a made up world and there's just like magic talked about. Like once you get to 70%, so like the last 30% of the book, you start getting it into like the fantasy element of where it's like type of different magic and stuff if that makes any sense like it feels like an actual fantasy I did enjoy it once I actually started sitting down today and like reading it and maybe it was because I turned on just like dark academia playlist in my I've been wearing just like my headphones sitting on the couch and just listening to my dark academia playlist on youtube and really just like not allowing myself any distraction i don't know i would recommend it i am gonna sit on my thoughts with it for a little bit though but that ending is that did the ending make it enough for me to like want to go pick up the other book right now no if i'm gonna be so honest with you guys no i feel like i can foresee myself reading the next book definitely i learned to love the main character like she is definitely morally gray maybe a few shades darker like there's different there's 50 shades of gray <laughs> so the scale of morally gray is broad <laughs> Ugh, book jokes. She's definitely morally gray, but you learn to like love her in a way because she's been through so many things that you can kind of understand her thought process. Like she's been through some things and the way that she takes care of business, it's definitely unique and you, you, your jaw will kind of be on the floor. Like one of the things that happens in this book that I put in the trigger warnings that she does as like a get back, like she's about her people. I'll tell you that like her people, she's about them. Okay. She holds them near and dear. One of the things that she does has your jaw on the floor, but then you're kind of like she ate, but then you're kind of like she ate, like somebody ate for sure. Ugh. Anyway, out of context, but if you've read this book, you may be knowing what I'm getting at. I'm going to sell myself to this book. Maybe watch a few TikToks on. We have two more books to finish off today's video, and it is currently 11.30 at night. And am I going to make it my life's mission to finish at least one more book? Yeah, I am. I will say that reading Dark Academia for this past week has made me feel like one of those like intelligent girlies. Like you guys know, like the literature girlies. And honestly, this is kind of like a taste test as well because I have never read like a Dark Academia. So this is kind of also introducing me to that kind of like subgenre in a way. I don't know if I like it. Saying all of this because this book is, I feel like, what is held to such a high standard is the blueprint. That is The Secret History by Donna Tartt. We're going to start it. These pages are thin. I don't know what this one's about either. I just know that it is very similar to If We Were Villains, which I'm glad that I started with If We Were Villains and I'm just now getting to The Secret History because it feels like enough time in my brain that the two are separated that it doesn't feel too similar to get into. <laughs> a way to start this book. I don't know how I feel about this. These little mini Alanis tell me they are not the cutest thing ever. 
Tell me they're not so just cute and small. They're just so cute and small. Yeah, Alani sent me like a huge case of these and I've just been loving my life. Cheers. Now that we're both, oh, hey honey. I am currently 20% through Secret History right now and I downloaded it on my Kindle because I saw somebody like on TikTok like reading a different copy of it than I have. I think it's like the Penguin like classic like the orange cover and it's so much like thicker than my book and I was like why? But then I realized because the pages are so thin. One of the things in this reading experience that has made it hard for me, not like a grudge against the book itself, like it's, it has not, it like doesn't affect the writing. The chapters are so long. I'm only on chapter three and I'm 20% through the book. It says that there are 44 minutes left in this chapter. Like I think I saw somebody post that one chapter was like 65 pages. I don't know what to expect from this book. I feel like when you're reading it, there's an underlyance of something sinister going on that you can tell that's being alluded to and kind of like foreshadowed through everything but right now I feel like we have just been building up like all of the characters and kind of like the backstory of them and learning about them and their connection and kind of the peculiarness is that even a word I don't know the way that they all kind of work and the way that they work together within the group I don't know I don't know what to expect from it because I have like I looked it up on TikTok but like no spoiler one I just wanted to see like what people think about this book which obviously I know that this book is held in a very very high regard and I have been trying to read it for days okay I think this is like my third day trying to read this book right now I just don't know if Dark Academia is for me this book is written beautifully it like you can put yourself there like I am imagining the house that they're in and I'm like there like everything about it, the imagery, the descriptions, like I'm there and it's so poetic and beautiful. I actually have even like annotated stuff in this book. It's why I keep on going back and forth between reading on the Kindle and the book, the Kindle and the book. I actually think I might, since I just started chapter three and I know exactly where that's at in the book, I might pick up the book and start reading again. So far, I mean, I don't know. I am enjoying it. I think I need to take myself out of the mindset because this is going to be like the last book for this video because I just want this video out and I was going to read A Deadly Education, but I've decided not to read that in today's video. I guess we kind of read the four most like hyped Dark Academia books in this video because I really just tacked on A Deadly Education because I thought that five sounded like a good number because five is my like favorite number. So that's why most of the time honestly when you see me do five books in a video it's because five is my favorite number. But I've decided it's just going to be Ninth House if we are villains in my dream to hold knife and now the secret history. That is what we are doing. Ooh also do you guys want to know I looked up a fan cast. I imagine Henry as a young Killian Murphy. I don't know why. Like, I just imagined it was a young Killian Murphy. Okay. First of all, yes. Oh my gosh, wait. I didn't realize. <laughs> I forgot that I got my hair done between this clip and the last clip. <laughs> I look different. So, update on the secret history. I think I'm 50% through this book right now. I was reading out my Kindle last night. I keep on going back and forth. So, yesterday, right after I did an update for this, I was reading it and then all of a sudden I got to like the dark part of the dark academia and I was like oh wait and that was the first time that in this book I was like reading it and didn't want to put the book down we got back to another slow part and it's just slow and these characters I'm so conflicted because I feel like you're not supposed to like them like you're not supposed to like them but they're so pretentious like this book is so pretentious it's not like ooh fun like they're kind of like like you know, sometimes you read a book and the characters are like rich and they're kind of low-key pretentious but it's not in like an insufferable way this is like in, in, in an insufferable way but I just am not having a good time and I feel like I keep on saying because like the writing is good and I feel like it's also the added pressure and there is an added pressure because since this is like such a widely loved book that I feel like oh well I should be like appreciating it because all these people love it. I kind of feel like I maybe don't love Dark Academia. I didn't really know that in every single Dark Academia book the characters are very pretentious and unlikable and that's the whole entire point. I kind of want to DNF it. 
because I literally still have another 50% of this book. This book has already taken me like so long to get through and I'm just not having a good time. Like I don't hate it. The writing is not awful. Honestly, she has amazing writing and yesterday I was looking through Goodreads reviews while I was getting my hair done and I was like, you know what? Like it's not a bad, badly written book and I feel like that's something that everybody can take away. Writing is beautiful, okay? But like even one of the characters is so extremely like the things that she writes for him to say and the things and his opinions painful i think i'm gonna dnf it for now hello everybody and welcome back we're gonna sit and we're gonna talk about the four books that i read in today's video and give you guys the ratings i've been keeping them a secret on goodreads i know that you guys have been on the edge of your seats i know that you guys know what video i've been filming so we're finally gonna sit down and talk about it so i read four books in today's video it was originally gonna be five but this video took me like two weeks to film and i thought it was gonna take me one week but what i think i have learned the lesson that i have learned from this week is i don't think that i'm a huge dark academia person i just don't think that it's my favorite to read i feel like i can't can read it. I don't think that it's my fave. Maybe I just haven't found my thing yet, but I feel like with Dark Academia in the most points, it's just a lot of pretentious people that you kind of want to force yourself to like, but you can't really like them because they act very pretentious and it's just kind of hard. We're going to start with the first book that I read in today's video, which is If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio. Now, it's interesting because I've been liking to sit with my thoughts on a book. That way we can like get the full true rating. So I think the rating that I ended up doing for this was a three and a half stars. Now the reason I did that was because I was really interested in the story and I feel like it was good that we started off with this one because I feel like Dark Academia does kind of follow this formulation of a plot line. You have like the group of friends and they're all kind of insufferable in a way but then they have their own quirks about them that maybe you can learn to like and something happens within the friend group and they're all kind of using this other outwardly thing as kind of like a something that bonds the group together. With this one, it was Shakespeare. Now, I think I didn't want Shakespeare to be the downfall for this book for me. I was like, I'm not gonna let it get to me just because I don't understand and I've never read Shakespeare. I don't understand like what these are. I think that maybe they're just like, you know, studying Shakespeare. They're really into it, whatever. However, Shakespeare does play a huge role in this book. There's a lot of, I feel like it's very metaphorical, the parallels between some of the Shakespearean plays and what happens within the book, and also the characters that literally quote Shakespeare to each other. So I feel like it is very important, and that's a me thing, but it still affects the writing, unfortunately, just because like I have no knowledge of Shakespeare. I don't know what it means. So that was lost on me, where I feel like if I was somebody who was really into Shakespeare or who has read it that is something that I would heavily appreciate of the parallels and the metaphors and everything that is woven in between but at the same time I wasn't bothered with the Shakespeare like I was not bothered with it it was just that I know that I'm misunderstanding the importance of this book because I don't understand the Shakespeare it's kind of like when I read the Song of Achilles I was like this is a beautiful book a beautiful story but I don't know anything about Greek mythology where this is very impactful for me and I feel like that's the same thing with this like you kind of have to have some knowledge or a little bit of love for Shakespeare and that's just not something that I have delved into. I don't know if I ever will. I've always kind of wanted to but I don't know. Other than that, other than the Shakespeare aspect, I found the story very interesting. There were some parts where I feel like the pacing of the book was a little off. Like we were kind of going in a straight line and then it would kind of fall over the place and there would just be kind of like over detail and it kind of felt dragged out and then we would get back to like you know, rearing up the story and going. However, I just really enjoyed reading this book. It was very atmospheric. I was very much there. I was very much in the element. And I do like reading about different characters. I will say how I say the characters are insufferable. I didn't feel that insufferable feeling with this group of characters. They didn't feel pretentious and insufferable. They just felt like they were like very much in Shakespeare and that's something they were passionate about in the theater. And like they all honestly kind of seemed like they cared about each other. Like their friend group actually seemed like they had love for each other. So I feel like that's why this made, this is like one of my favorites that I've read from today's video and it is a three and a half stars because I really, really did have a fun time. There was just some of the things that I feel like the Shakespeare was lost 
lost on me and I don't feel like I was just really super enthralled in it but the ending of this book I feel like is what took it from a three to a three and a half I spent like an hour before bed one night just scouring reddit to see like what other people were thinking of the ending and then that's where also on reddit people explained like the whole entire like Shakespeare the metaphors and everything and then I had some newfound appreciation after reading the book of like the Shakespeare stuff that was involved in everything but the ending of this book is genius and I really want ML Rio to release even just like a novella for a little bit of a continuation. I read In My Dreams I Hold a Knife which is actually a dark academia thriller because this one's kind of more like a thriller than just kind of you know a novel and this one one I thought it was funny because on Goodreads somebody was like the one star review for this is that like what is the whole entire point of the knife? Like it's in the title and it's just kind of whatever. I don't know. This book I ended up giving a three stars again. This one was very, very atmospheric to me where I felt very much in the college and also it was kind of takes place like during the fall in the then timeline because it goes in the back and forth timeline and I felt very much there. The friend group with this one was a little confusing to me because I did also like that in this one it did feel that the friend group very much cared for each other. However, our main character... I absolutely hated her and it's hard when you very much dislike the main character she has a lot of flaws and I feel like any main character you can pick out their flaws like that's just a thing it I just couldn't do it and I didn't really like the way that this book ended like it felt like it was trying to do like a cool mysterious thing but that was lost on me I don't know also it wasn't very thrilling it was just like a good story very atmospheric I was very much into it because it almost kind of feels like a whodunit as well it was very interesting it's like a then and now where then they're in college now they're going to like a reunion and there is something that kind of binds them all together of this mystery and it is a very enjoyable entertaining read but I honestly don't think that I will think very much about this other than that these last two books are interesting. So we have Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. The book that honestly I had one of the hardest times reading in this video and probably a book that I've had the hardest time reading just recently period. And you guys are going to be very surprised when I say that I am rating this book a 3.75 stars. Now it was so close to a four but I think what does it make it a four stars is because of how much of a hard time that I had to get through the book. It literally can't be like a four stars or above because if I'm being honest with myself like it just isn't. Like it's it was so hard for me to get through. I It took me days because I just didn't want to pick up the book and when I did pick up the book I was just like ugh I can't do I can't get into it. I've talked a lot about the process so we're not going to talk about the process here. The reason that it's 3.75 stars is honestly the way that this book ended and the storylines once we got going were very interesting and I really liked like the writing that Lee Bardugo made and like I think this is so interesting because I watched some TikToks on this that this is essentially kind of like some of the conspiracy theories that people have about Yale and so she kind of wrote wrote about them and made them into like this fantasy story and I think that that's super interesting to just think about like people having these theories about Yale anyway. Again once we got going I got attached to the characters, I got attached to the story, I really liked the way that it was going and I think that it's interesting but I will say that I did give this a 3.75. The magic and everything and it started getting super interesting and the characters you learn to love and I just had a good time reading like the last probably 200 pages of this book. <sighs> Some of y'all are about to be real mad at me. I will say though, it's fine. The secret history, I did end up DNFing. I got over 50% through this book and I got to the 50% mark, something big happens, and then I went on to Goodreads because I had absolutely no motivation to keep continuing to read the story. Also, the pages in this book are Bible thin. I had the same experience with this as I did with Ninth House of just trying to get into it, but this one was even harder because at least with Ninth House, I was intrigued with the characters and the kind of society of what was going on. This one, no. All of the characters are super pretentious in a very insufferable way and one of the characters I feel like Donna Tartt writes to make you like first like him and then start to hate him. Also like incestuous undertones like all of this stuff. Guys no I'm sorry I can't do it. I can't. Like that is like the final straw once I started doing that as well. There are so many things in this book that just are wrong like they're just wrong where it's like I can't even enjoy the book because I will say Donna Tart has exquisite writing there's a lot of one-liners in her book that are very beautiful very like very 
quoteable, okay? But the rest of this book, it's like it dra and they, she drags on stuff for pages upon pages. It's like, I get the point. I get it. I don't need more detail about it. I swear we're good. Hey, you don't got to. You don't have to. Book not for me. I'm definitely DNFing it. I honestly don't know if I would ever even try to go back to it. I don't feel like I'm missing anything. Like, I don't feel like there's anything in my life missing from this reading experience. So, with that being said, we're keeping this at a DNF. I don't know what to take away from this. I did have a good time. I like stepping outside of my comfort zone with books because I like, you know, my cute little romances, my cute little, well, not cute. Sometimes my fantasy books get a little, you know, they're my comfort zone and sometimes I like stepping outside of them to see, you know, if I may like something else. And with Dark Academia, I think that they're enjoyable. I think that they're entertaining, but I don't think that it is like the subgenre for me at the end of the day. But I hold respect for those of you who are dedicated to the books and the aesthetic because I think that both of those things are so much fun. So thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you guys enjoyed it, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube stuff that you guys know how to do. And with that being said, I am going to go read some of my cute little romances to put myself in a better headspace. And I will see you guys when I see ya. Peace.